Detective O'Reilly had been with the force for 20 years, but nothing could have prepared him for what he was about to witness on that fateful night. It all began with the first hint of autumn, when the air turned crisp and the leaves whispered secrets as they danced in the wind. It was Friday, October 13th, and the town of Willows Creek was about to face its darkest hour. Elizabeth Street was known for its picturesque Victorian homes and pristine gardens, an oasis in the otherwise bustling town. But that calm was shattered when a 911 call came in just after midnight. The panicked voice of a young woman, barely coherent, begged for help. The line went dead before the operator could get her name or location, but the operator managed to trace the call to a house on Elizabeth Street. Detective O'Reilly and his partner, Officer Johnson, were dispatched to the scene. As they approached the house, they noticed that the front door was ajar and a dim light flickered from within. The air was thick with tension and the faint scent of decay, making O'Reilly's skin crawl. Every step they took toward the house felt like an eternity, and the gnarled branches of the ancient oak trees seemed to reach out, as if warning them to turn back. Upon entering the house, they found themselves in a narrow hallway adorned with family photographs. The floor creaked beneath their feet, and the air was heavy with dust. As they moved further into the house, they discovered that every room had been ransacked, and the once pristine home now bore the scars of violence. The walls were marred with gashes and smears of blood, and the furniture lay overturned and shattered, a testament to the struggle that had taken place. Their search led them to the basement, where they discovered the lifeless body of the young woman who had made the call. Her hands were bound, and her mouth was covered with duct tape. Her eyes, wide open in terror, stared into the void. As they examined the scene, they noticed a series of cryptic messages scrawled on the walls in blood. The messages seemed to form a pattern, as if they were a warning or a clue to something much more sinister. The symbols were a mixture of ancient runes and occult imagery, creating a chilling atmosphere in the dimly lit basement. O'Reilly and Johnson collected evidence and called for backup. As they waited, they pieced together a timeline of events that led to this horrific discovery. The young woman, Sarah Thompson, was a college student who lived alone in the house. She had been missing for three days, and her friends and family had no idea where she could be. When they found her phone records, they discovered that she had been receiving disturbing messages from an unknown number, messages filled with cryptic warnings and threats. They learned that the unknown number belonged to a prepaid burner phone, making it impossible to trace back to its owner. The messages grew increasingly ominous as they approached the night of Sarah's disappearance, with one final message simply reading, It's too late. As more officers arrived on the scene, the investigation intensified. They searched the house and its surroundings, hoping to find any clues that might lead them to the perpetrator. Meanwhile, O'Reilly and Johnson combed through Sarah's personal belongings, searching for any connections to her mysterious tormentor. In her room, they found her laptop, which contained a series of emails exchanged with a local professor of anthropology, Dr. Martin Reeves. The emails revealed that Sarah had been researching the history of the house on Elizabeth Street, trying to understand the strange occurrences she had been experiencing ever since she moved in. She had confided in Dr. Reeves about her growing fears and the eerie messages she had been receiving. The detectives decided to visit Dr. Reeves at his office at the university. He was a tall, thin man with a shock of white hair and piercing blue eyes. He seemed genuinely distraught by the news of Sarah's death and was eager to help in any way he could. He shared his knowledge of the house's history, explaining that it was built on land that had once been the site of a pagan ritual ground, dating back hundreds of years. According to local lore, the land was cursed, and those who built their homes there were doomed to suffer terrible fates. Dr. Reeves also revealed that he had been helping Sarah translate the cryptic messages she had been receiving. He had determined that they were written in an ancient language used by a long-forgotten cult that practiced dark and sinister arts. The symbols in the basement matched those in the messages, suggesting that the killer was not only familiar with this obscure knowledge, but also deeply immersed in its practice. Armed with this new information, the detectives returned to the crime scene to search for further evidence. As they continued their investigation, they found a hidden door in the basement, concealed behind a false wall. The door was locked, but with some effort, they managed to break it open. Behind the door, they discovered a narrow tunnel that led deep underground. The air was damp and stale, 
and the darkness seemed to swallow them as they descended into the earth. As they ventured further into the tunnel, they found that the walls were lined with strange artifacts, ancient relics, and more cryptic symbols. It was clear that whoever had built this tunnel had a deep connection to the dark history of the land. Finally, they reached a large chamber, illuminated by flickering torches. In the center of the room, they found a stone altar, stained with the blood of countless victims. The floor was littered with the bones of the unfortunate souls who had been sacrificed to whatever dark force the cult had been worshipping. And in the corner they found a hooded figure, hunched over an ancient book, chanting in a language that sent shivers down their spines. The figure turned to face them, revealing a face so twisted and grotesque that it barely resembled something human. Its eyes were black pools of malevolence, and it snarled at them, revealing a mouth filled with sharp, jagged teeth. As it lunged toward them, the detectives drew their weapons and fired, but the bullets seemed to have no effect. The creature was relentless, driven by a dark and ancient power that would not be stopped. As O'Reilly and Johnson fought for their lives, they realized that they had uncovered something far more sinister than they could have ever imagined. They had entered a world of darkness and evil that had remained hidden for centuries, and now they were trapped in its grasp. When you subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell. Click here for more true scary stories.